So here's a question. This is probably about Tiger here from Wolfpack 1977. Are golf carts not allowed during these tournaments? They are not. Not during the PGA Tour. You know, on, on charity events, things that Tiger has played in the past, the events with the sun, you can use a golf cart. But on the PGA Tour, no, you cannot. There was a collegiate golf star, I want to say five to seven years ago, and his name, it, it slips my mind right now. And he had a withered leg problem from birth. And he earned his tour card. It was absolutely amazing. And he was on the tour, and he was pretty competitive. But he really struggled to stay up physically and hold up. And there had been dialogue and discussion, should we make an exception for this exceptional young collegiate star to do this? And they decided not to allow it. And he, he lasted a couple of years and then just kind of stepped away after he graduated from college. But no, uh, you cannot use a cart on the PGA Tour. Yeah, that's that's interesting to me, you know, because I remember the, in the Masters last, you know, yesterday they were talking about one of the amateurs that did really well. And they say, well, next week and he's got to carry his own clubs. Yeah, you know, Texas when he goes, A&M. Yeah, so when he goes and plays in college, Sam Bennett. But I'm surprised that they don't allow the car. I guess it's just sort of the old school mentality of the golf people, right? That's it. Okay. Next let's, question. Okay. So this one is from uh, Pedro Rosario. Does Hacksaw believe any of these San Diego State basketball players can play in the NBA? Not really. Um, I think Jaden Ledee has an NBA body, and I think if he continues to develop his game, yes. Uh, Gisha Johnson might be an NBA defensive specialist because he's so big and he plays so long, but his offense is really negligible. No, I hope he stays, and I said last week he needs to spend every minute of every day in the summer if he's staying working on his offense because I think his defense is fine and there's no doubt that he's got these great physical skills and he's a specimen. But if he can refine things like a short jump shot, if he can refine a hook shot with that 6'9 frame and those long arms, it's just going to add to his resume. Uh, but I, I don't think there are any other NBA guys on that roster. Next question. Okay, so here, here this is one's from Frank Carulli and he says, all right, Hamilton, keep that NHL talk coming. You got it. Uh, you know, I came out of a hockey background. Uh, I did hockey uh, before I became the voice of the Chargers in the NFL. Uh, grew up in the sport, love the sport. It's it's a really different sport. And I will tell you, the postseason is so different. You just don't understand the tenacity once the playoffs begin. You don't understand when you walk in the room before the first playoff game and the atmosphere is so electric and so intense and so different and the pressure in the playoffs. You don't want to be the one that makes a mistake that takes a bad penalty. You don't want to turn the puck over in front of your net. You make sure you don't throw a cross-ice pass that winds up on somebody's stick on the slot right in the face of your goaltender. Mm -hmm. The guys, the pressure, you can cut through it with a pair of scissors. It's just, it's a phenomenal, phenomenal experience. And of course, it's capped off by the final game that's played between teams with the auto show of sportsmanship, they shake hands at the at the final game, regardless of who did what to whom during the course of the seven-game series. So it's electric. If you like hockey, you need to be with us because if not, you're going to get cross-checked in the corner, and we will talk puck as part of our bonus coverage. Are all the rounds of the playoffs in the NHL seven-game series? Yes, they are now. Okay, well, way to go. We got a couple of, co uh, of hockey questions here. And this one's from Ryan Kennedy. And he says, I think Jonathan Quick still has an ax to grind showing the Kings he still has it during these upcoming playoffs. He looked pissed um, that that he wasn't playing against the Kings on Thursday night. I, th I think Jonathan's still got gas left in the tank. He's had a bunch of injuries. That's been an issue. And he was kind of victimized as being a great player as the team started to go into rebuild mode. And then obviously he kind of lost his starting job. Uh, but he got a new lease on life. He's playing for Vegas. And Vegas is one of the top teams out west, they in Seattle. And, you know, he may get a chance to play against the Kings. And like I think, Jonathan's had a really good career. I don't know if they'll ever erect a statue out front of Crypto.com Arena next to Gretzky and those guys, but maybe they should consider it. He's a really fine, fine goaltender. Okay, let's move along here. Got some more questions. This one's uh, from James Perez. He says, do you think the pitch clock is affecting the veteran pitchers, especially since the time and the half innings are shorter now as well? 
Well, it's it's an interesting dynamic. Um, I think some of the pitchers are struggling, but not a lot. There have not been a lot of pitch violations on the mound. Um, I do think the pitch clock has changed the game strategically. Uh, you know, their stolen bases have just rocketed through the ceiling. Uh, the first two weeks of the baseball season, <coughs> everybody is running now, and suddenly speed is going to become a focal point to the makeup of your roster. Uh, I don't, but I, I don't get the sense the pitchers are struggling. Now, John and I talked about this last week. When we get to the warm weather, a week from now in St. Louis and Kansas City and a few of these other places, mm -hmm. and pitchers get fatigued, and there is no time to step off that mound and go, oh, catch your breath, because you got to get back up on the mound because you got 15 seconds. I think the pitchers in hot weather cities are going to stress on this a little bit. Now, in terms of the batters, well, we talked about Juan Soto. He does not look comfortable in the batter's box, and there's no standing around, and there's no doing this with the gloves, and – so there, I think there are a select group of bats that are struggling with that pitch clock and maybe getting psyched out about it. But I, I do think it's been good for the game. I also think that the the ban of the shift is going to lead to batting averages that are continuing to go up and up. Uh, last year, I mentioned this a week ago, last year collectively teams hit 242 in baseball with the shift. Uh, the, as of the first week of the season, they're hitting 250. The second week of the season, teams hit 255. So, John, you do the math. There has been an incremental jump each week uh, in batting averages in baseball because there is no shift. Yeah. I mean, did you see um, ESPN Sunday night game where they had the, the microphone on Machado right. playing third base? And they were asking him, what did you think about the shift? And he's like, well, you know, it's just taking a little getting used to. And he talked about how, yeah, there's a lot more athleticism, balls getting through the hole. I mean, what's your take on that? Do you like having the athletes with the mic on during the middle of the game? If they talk baseball, I don't really need to know what he does on Sunday night with his kids at home. I don't care what their favorite candy is. <laughs> talk baseball to the man. So it, it's it's okay. It's it. Uh, if I were a player, you know, and there's guys at first and second base, and I'm playing at third, and I'm and I'm having to talk to Buster Olney in between pitch, I would find that a distraction. Mm -hmm. But he he just seemed to enjoy it. And again, it's only for thirty seconds to a minute, whatever. But if you're gonna do it, talk baseball with me. Don't tell me about Easter bunnies and candy with your kids and jelly <laughs> beans and all that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right. Next question. Okay. Let's move on. We want to get to some of these um, YouTube comments because we got a whole bunch of them in here. So let's go down the list. And here's one right here. This is from uh, Paul Jones talking about Austin Eckler. He goes, go already, Eckler. Oh, you know, you, you're, you're sending us this message from left field. If you let Austin Eckler go, you lose an enormous chunk of your offense. He's a really good NFL running back. Run and catch. He makes that quarterback better. There's nobody else on the roster that has ever shown they can do what he does. Uh, but it does not appear that he's going to get any type of pay hike nor contract extension. So he will play this year unhappy as he is puts up good numbers, then he has a chance to be a walk-free agent. I think the one thing that stunned me around the National Football League is nobody's talking about the NFL draft and running backs. It's like the running back has become persona non grata. Hmm. I mean, there's a great running back at the University of Texas. There's a bunch of them around the country, and they're almost an afterthought. It's become a quarterback's league. It's become a throwing league. It's become great players on defense league. So Eckler's just this time in the NFL, they don't seem to place a value. Now, he's making 6.2 mil. Last I checked, I'd run the ball for 6.2 mil. I know you would, too, because yeah. we combined, we don't make 6.2 mil. Uh, but it's it's sad. But don't denigrate Austin Eckler. He's been a really good player. And if there was no Austin Eckler here, and I'm surprised he's never had a major injury because he is so small, but he's so physical. If he had not been here, this offense would not be considered a playoff team at all. Now, there's trade rumors now, too, right, that he might be going somewhere. So we'll, we'll see. Nobody else is willing to take on a $6 million contract. Why? Because it's like the NFL has devalued the running back position. Mm. Okay, let's move along. we got a, some comments here about the, uh, the, the Padres. This is from No Name. <laughs> Talk about Soto. 
He goes, in the time I've been going to games, the Rockies just seem to have the Padres number. They seem to always peel a couple of games off in a series. And as for Soto, can't really explain it other than it must be above the shoulders with him. Maybe he's struggling with expectations, which wasn't an issue when he was playing with the Nationals. No, because he was a rock solid player. I think his career batting average in Washington wound up being 290, 292 before he came here in the trade. And like I say, at 232 last year, he's in the 220s right now. He just does not look mechanically right to me. And I guess if this is what blows my mind, you got smart people in that dugout led by Bob Melvin, and you got all these hitting coaches and these accolades. And he's the guy from St. Louis that came as the administrative assistant, Mike Schilt, the Schilt, former yeah. manager. Mm -hmm. You got all these smart guys. How come they can't figure him out and get him? situated, comfortable in the box. There's no doubt he's a great physical specimen. I was perturbed last year, John, because I thought he was trying to hit every ball to Mission Bay. <laughs> His uppercut, everything was to try to knock it out of the yard, and his batting average suffered. But when you got all these smart people in the dugout, is there nobody that sees any mechanical flaws? You know, if you're moving around in the box, you tell me where your bat position is going to be. If you're doing this, you tell me, are you going to be able to get around with the make the connection on the sweet part of the bat if you're doing this all the time? There's something not right with him. We'll see if he hits his way out of it. It's small sample size this season, yes, but we had a whole season last season where we saw the exact same thing happen. Thoughts? Well, if he just bought a house in Coronado. So maybe he's starting to settle in a bit. I don't know. I have confidence it's going to work out. I I, I really enjoyed like Juan Soto's personality, mm -hmm. you know, like when they did the thing in spring training where they walk by the camera and they'd ask him a goofy question. He always had something fun to say. So he was a good guy to root for. Uh, so I, I, he'll come around. I mean, it's not going to be, I mean, the dude needs to make 40, 50 million. I mean, he, he turned down 440, right? So well, he's, I think he's feeling the pressure, the expectation, but he can't use the explanation New stadium, new team, Petco Park, new environment, different division. You can't use that anymore. You're a veteran guy. He's got to go produce the numbers. Next question. Okay, let's go to the NFL. We got a comment here from Andrew Crokin. He says, hey, since Lamar Jackson is being traded from the Ravens, then they can go get TCU quarterback Max Duggan to replace Lamar Jackson as the team's new starting QB for week one in the 2023 season. You know, it's interesting. All these quarterbacks this week and next are all making their final visits. Max Duggan's name is not being mentioned anywhere. It, I'm not going to say he's fallen off the radar, but I don't think he's viewed as an upper echelon quarterback. I don't think he's viewed as a first round quarterback. So, and there's nothing wrong with going in the second round of the third round of the right team, right system, but his name has not been mentioned at all. But I will say this to you. I think everything Andrew has changed in the last 24 hours, what I've been told with Baltimore out of nowhere, Signing Odell Beckham Jr. Oh, yeah. One year, 13 million base, potential to make 18 million. He's not used up. He's 30 years of age. Granted, he's had two knee injuries, averages 14 yards per catch. I think he's caught 54 touchdowns, 650 receptions. He can play, and they really need wide receiver help. I was told that Lamar Jackson is the one that made the call to Beckham come play in Baltimore. Mm. So if Lamar is influencing Beckham and the decision to sign, because he had talked to the Rams and he had talked to Cleveland, he had talked to the Cowboys back. If Lamar Jackson's doing that, that leads me to leave. Lamar Jackson is going to be the starting quarterback in Baltimore. Now, from point A, where we are at this hour on a Monday, to point B, when does he sign the contract and for how much and what about the guarantees? There's a big, big dis distance there. But I was told from people in Baltimore, Lamar Jackson is the one that made the contact to convince Beckham, come play in Baltimore. And I don't think Beckham would be going there if Trace McSorley was the quarterback, the yeah. backup guy, right. or Tyler Huntley. So I got to believe that they'll get this thing done in Baltimore. So maybe Lamar Jackson sticks around. So, um, when, when is the draft? It's coming in a couple of weeks. Yeah, so we're, I think, 22 days out. Okay, so, I mean, everything's going to change again when the draft goes down, people parlaying. I mean, Jackson is such a tremendous player. Um, it'd be great to have Odell Beckham there, oh. but is Jackson going to be happy in, in Baltimore, or is he going to be potentially 
peeved? Is, it, is he going to feel like he got punched in the face just like Austin Eckler did? Would you be peeved if I made you sign this franchise tag and you had to do this podcast for $32 million for one year? That's what he gets with he signs a franchise tag. Now, mm -hmm. he has no security long term, but the issue is you always can negotiate from the franchise tag fee and then you expand the contract. I think despite all the things that have been said and all the controversies that are swirling out there around him, I really firmly believe Lamar Jackson now is going to be the starting quarterback in Baltimore, and they do run the ball well, and they rock solid defense, and now they got a star wide receiver in OBJ with all the other young wide receivers. So I, if I were a betting man, I think we'd be sharing crab cakes talking about Lamar Jackson in Baltimore next season. Hey, listen, we hope you've enjoyed our Monday bonus coverage.